Hi there guys, welcome to this episode. And I'm hoping this is gonna be the first part of a three part series. And it's gonna be all about how to put a Z-Tech in a Fiesta. Right, I've decided to make this video basically because well, it's driving me mad. I'm going slightly mad. Uh, I, I started off with the plan of get a Z-Tech engine, whack it in a Fiesta, simple, job done. Uh, turns out it's way more complicated than I ever even imagined. There's so many more parts that I never even had thought about. Um, and I find it very, very difficult to get information, especially up-to-date information. Um, so I decided, well, I'm going through all of this and if I can help somebody else out with a guide to how to do it, then that's what I want to do. Um, I've tried to write down everything as, to, as a, like a list of what I need to go through and it turns out I'm probably going to have about three episodes of this. Um, I'll try and keep it as concise as possible and I'll also try and put as many links, as much information as possible. But I'm going to need your guys' help as well. If there's anything that I say in the video that you say, oh God, he's miles out, he's totally wrong, let me know, put a comment. If there's anything that you say, oh, you could do it this way or use a part from that car, please put me a message, let me know. And together, we'll put a list together of all the parts that we need to put an engine in the car. And I'm gonna start with the biggest, most important piece, and that is the engine. We'll start with that. Right. In one of my other videos, you'll have seen why this one is not the right engine for me and why this one is the right engine for me. I'll go through it really, really quickly. This one is a Duratec. This is a Z-Tech. They sound very similar, but this is a Duratec and it's actually made by Mazda. It's not made by Ford, which means that it doesn't fit most of the gearboxes. Whereas this Z-Tech, most gearboxes, Ford gearboxes will fit straight onto it. So that's why I'm not using this one. I could use this engine. Uh, it just means more work, basically. Its parts are slightly harder to find and it's more work. So I'm not gonna bother with that one. I'm gonna go with this one. There are other options, obviously. There is the Z-Tech. You've got this one, which is a black top here. And there is one before that, that is a silver top. Um, these all come from Mondeos, these engines. You can use them from the Focus as well, but these ones come from the Mark I Mondeo. Uh, the silver tops, the ones with this, an aluminium silver rocker cover, they're the early ones from about 96 to about 98. The later ones from 98 to about 2000 are these ones, the black top ones. There is slightly more power in the black top than the silver tops. Other than that, they're pretty much the same. There is a slight difference in the cam belts, so just make sure when you're choosing the right cam belt that you make sure you get the right cam belt with all the different tension and stuff. So that's that. There are obviously other options. You've got a uh, ST170 engine, or the ST150s that will come out of the Fiestas and the Focuses. Really, really good engines. They're really revvy, they're really good, they're really strong, plenty of power in them. That's also, perfectly viable option. Most of the parts that go on this will fit on them as well. For me, it's Im almost impossible. It's like finding left-handed chicken teeth, trying to find an ST170 engine in Northern Sweden. So I'm not even gonna bother looking for that. So I'm going for this one, the Blacktop Z-Tech engine, just to make things easier. Um, to be able to fit this then straight into the car, it really needs one thing, and that's there. What that is, is an engine mount. Now this one is made and supplied by Sean Baker. Uh, and it consists of three parts. We've got this part here. You actually weld this part here to the suspension leg of the car. This part here is the bit that takes up all the vibrations. So that's the engine, actually, it's got like a rubber mounted bushing there. And this is the part that bolts to the engine. It's already got a stud sticking out and then there's two bolts, one there and one there that bolt it straight to the engine. If you use the black top, like this one, 
then there is a plate there that goes in between it if you use the silver top one you can take the plate out and just put the engine the engine mount straight to the engine that is pretty much what we need to do to this engine don't really need to do a lot more to the actual physical engine itself there's a lot more we have to do with bits that we bolt onto it or take off of it but that is what we need to get the engine in the next job then is getting that lump there in there right the first thing we'd have to do then is this is the engine mount for this ordinary this is a standard 1.1 fiesta engine but there's the engine mount for it uh, and that's obviously in the way so we have to cut along here and get rid of all of this engine mount here bin that and in its place we fit that obviously i can't fit it right now because that is in the way but it does fit as you can see quite nicely around that leg so once we've got the engine mount in place here the engine will be able to lift in now it's obviously only on one point which is here uh, the other point of it will come a bit later on and i will show that in a later video uh, when we go into the gearbox side of it but right now i want to stick on just the engine part now once we've got the engine in the car we need to have two more things to get the engine running one of them is we need to get air and fuel into the engine and the other thing we need is to get the exhaust gases out of the engine this engine has got this tiny little car breath that's what feeds the air and the fuel into the engine where the spark plugs here that makes the bang and then we've got the exhaust that goes out there the ztec engine is no different the difference we have on it though is that we're going to have here on this side of it we're going to use carburetors on this car now there are different versions of this you can use the standard uh, ignition systems that you can get off the ford when you take the engine out of the car you can take all the ignition systems with it but it's a lot more work to get all those cables in place you have to take with it the all the computer systems we have to have all the engine management we have to have all of the security systems that are built into the main loom of the car of the original loom um, it's totally possible to do it i'm not going to say it's the wrong thing or you shouldn't do it if you want to do it crack on and do it i've no problems with that i'm not going to do it that way uh, just because like i say it's a pain to do it so i'm going to make it slightly easier on myself but obviously slightly more expensive so what i'm going to use is i'm going to use a set of carbs set of carburetors four carburetors but not from a car i'm using them from a motorbike so there'll be four carburetors placed here that are fueled with a, a pump that pumps fuel into each four of the carburetors uh, so that means that i need to have four carburetors from a motorbike i also then need to get them fitted to the engine and to do that i'm going to use a custom made intake manifold there are loads of places that do them there are there's loads of information out there on the internet as to how you can build it yourself if you've got the stuff to do it crack on and do it why not give it a go if you don't or you don't want to there are lots of places that can buy it uh, i will put up a picture now of the one that i'm probably going to use um, i'm not quite sure if i'm going to make it myself or i'm going to buy it i am a little bit tempted to make it myself we've got the new tig welders here I want to learn to TIG weld and I want to learn to aluminium TIG weld, so I am a little bit tempted to build it myself. Um, we'll see what I do in the end, uh, whether, I, whether I actually do it or whether I buy a complete system or not, I don't know yet, but we'll see. Obviously, whatever that will be, it will be in a video, I promise you that. Um, so once we've got that fitted, we've got the fuel in coming into the engine, we obviously need to go out from the engine again loads of different things for doing this um, the standard manifold won't fit um, it's too big so we have to use a custom one again there are people like Shane Baker that make them for you and you can buy them off of him a budget one or there are people that make these in stainless steel perfectly up to you it's all about your budget and what you want to do um, Obviously they're bolt-on items, so you buy it from like Shane Baker or another company and you just bolt it on and that's it, job done. You don't need to worry about it anymore. You can, of course, make it yourself. You need to get a plate that fits on the engine 
you need to get all the bends and stuff and weld it together and you can do that I'm not really tempted to do that myself um, for example the one that Shane Baker does is relatively cheap and I don't have to do it so that's probably the route I'm going to go so after we've got the fuel in and we've got the uh, air into the car and we've got some way of getting the exhaust gases out what we need now is the bit in the middle the bang and to do that we need some sort of an ignition system the ZTEC that's in there has got an ignition system to it so if you're going to pull out all the uh, fuel injection system you'll obviously have automatically the ignition system to it uh, but like I said you've got to have all the boxes for it. you've got to have all the ECUs you've got to have the wiring you've got to know which pins you've got to take and all the rest of it so if you want to have a go at that crack on and do it it's fine again I'm not going to do that I'm going to use what's called a standalone ECU system which means I'm going to get one that fits the engine um, it's not made by Ford it's made by somebody else there are loads loads and loads and loads of different companies that do this I'll try and put up some names of different companies that do it um, and you can choose yourself choose one of these ones that fits your budget but also fits your uh, level of abilities how much can you do yourself the one I am probably going to choose is this one um, the system itself is very simple it's called a 4D system which means it uses four different sensors to run the engine now the sensors it uses on the engine one of them will be fitted here which is where the intake comes in the air and the bike carbs are going to sit on here and what you've got fitted to that is a throttle position sensor it's a sensor that looks how much is the throttle open is it fully open or is it closed and it obviously gives it a degree of openness if it's open or closed basically or whereabouts i am in between it we then need to use this little sensor here now this sensor here is the crank position sensor it's not actually fitted to the crankshaft it reads the flywheel which will normally sit here when it's not fitted to an engine cradle but basically what it's working out is when the piston number one is at top dead center so when the piston is all the way at the top this sensor will get a signal and that signal will then be able to tell the engine management system that 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 cylinder is now at top dead center and it can start to fire the next sensor we need is actually still fitted to this engine but the next sensor we're going to use is this one and this is for the coil pack um, and we go in there and basically what this type of coil pack does is it fires one side and then the other side one side the other side so we need to know where is the engine we need to know how much fuel is going in and then we can work out when we need to turn when, when we need to fire the spark for the cylinders so that's the third one that we need right so that's the first episode and it's all about the engine uh, and i want to just keep this one to the engine the next video that i put up will all be about the gearbox um, so stay tuned for that one make sure you press that subscribe button so you don't miss about the gearbox um, like i said in the beginning if there's anything you think that I've said wrong, if there's anything you want to add to what I've said, if there's anything you say, oh, this is much better, use this one, please put a comment and we'll try and get a list together of everything so that it helps somebody out. And I hope it really helps somebody out that's trying to get into this and is trying to work out what information's best, where do I find that, what cars that come from. Let me know, please, okay? Right, thanks a lot for watching this time and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot and bye-bye.